BizTech's Asia Pacific Cybersecurity Show. Every week, we bring our audience updates on the latest threats and incidences in Asia Pacific to help organizations better protect themselves. But today, our show, we have a special guest. He's Dr. Manuel Hepfer. He's the head of knowledge and insights at Istari and also an affiliate researcher at Oxford University. Manuel, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yes, thanks for the invitation. Now, Manuel, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about really Istari's and Oxford side business schools joint study entitled CEO Report on Cyber Resilience. Now, this report offers personal insights from 37 CEOs, one third of whom are from Asia, and provides a glimpse into the minds of CEOs when it comes to managing cyber risk. Now, could you start then for giving us the context around the study? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Brian. So we realized that over the past couple of years, organizations are facing severe cyber attacks and serious cyber attacks. And when these attacks happen, the eyes are oftentimes on the CEO. But we've done research in the past and we found out that the CEOs sometimes feel like this is a very daunting and complex topic because they lack familiarity with it, perhaps, because they come from marketing and finance worlds, not from the world of technology. And we wanted to dig into that CEO perspective in particular. So we set out and we've done a first of its kind study. I don't think anybody has ever as comprehensively explored the minds and the actions of CEOs in how they manage cybersecurity risk. And so we've done that together with Oxford University. We've released the report this week. Um, and the overarching insight of it is that CEOs, especially those that have been through a serious cyber attack, realize that they shouldn't invest all of their money into cybersecurity protection, but instead focus on building cyber resilience proactively before something happens. Okay, and that's a big mindset shift, isn't it? And, and I think one of the key things that came about is when, when I delved into your study, there were nine out of the 37 CEOs that actually experienced an attack. Now, what were some of the lessons that they shared in terms of mistakes, successes, and lessons as a result of that? It's a very good question. And by comparing those CEOs that have been through a serious attack with those that have not been through a serious attack, it allowed us to compare these two different groups of peoples and derive insights into what works and what didn't work. And just to give you two to three examples of some of the advice that the CEOs gave us who have been through a serious cyber attack, one of that was, well, just like you have financial audits, you're also supposed to have cybersecurity audits. And they should be on a recurring basis and report directly to the CEO because the CEOs noticed that there was something going on that they weren't aware of. And sometimes they had, we call this blindly trusted the cybersecurity and IT teams that everything was going well. So they were treating the absence of a cyber attack as an indication that the company was on the right track. And that not always is the case. That is really, really interesting. And also then I think you built on that by, by your know, report detailing four different mindsets that CEOs should adopt to build cyber resilience. Could you walk us through those four mindsets? Yes, I, I'm very happy to. So as I said, the overarching insight of the report is that CEOs should move away from building cybersecurity to proactively um, investing in building cyber, resilient, or cyber resilience. And our report outlines two ways of doing that. So the first thing, it relates to the mindset shifts that CEOs should adopt. And the second part of the report outlines a set of questions, uh, sorry, actions, playbooks that they, can, that they can follow. Now, the four mindset shifts, it's kind of a precondition to evoking change. Um, and there's four mindsets that we discovered. And the first mindset is that CEOs should become co-responsible with the cybersecurity team instead of just being accountable for cybersecurity. Now, there's a big difference in that because accountable means becoming the face of the mistake after something happens, but co-responsible means being proactive and engaging with the cybersecurity team about something that could potentially cost the business's life. So that's and Daniel, the this is a huge difference. This is a huge shift, right? Because most CEOs, as you mentioned earlier in our conversation, basically blindly trust 
their uh, uh, chief information security officer, uh, if they have one, or basically their IT teams. The, uh, situation normal assumes that everything is all okay. Here, they've got to change their whole mindset and say, hey, I need to be sitting in on these meetings to understand that essentially this is how things actually work and this is our real state of readiness and resilience. You're 100% right. And there were a few CEOs who realized that they hadn't engaged enough. And admittedly, if you're a CEO, there's a lot of different demands and priorities and that across the business, marketing, finance, go-to-market, revenue, all of that. And cybersecurity is one of that. But what I found interesting was that a lot of CEOs regretted not having spent more time with them. And a CEO of a large business actually spent 10 full days with the cybersecurity team after the cyber attack and the year afterwards to learn, just to be engaged a bit better. So the first mindset is all about move away from thinking you're just accountable to becoming co-responsible with your cybersecurity team. And the second mindset relates to something that you just mentioned, and that relates to the nature of trust. Now, if you're a CEO, you always have to trust your teams. But the CEOs admitted that they perhaps have trusted the cybersecurity team too blindly and they wish that they had been a bit more informed. So the two, second mindset shift is moving away from blind trust to a state of informed trust. Now, the nature of cybersecurity is always that you cannot be fully in control as a chief executive because that's just not your nature or your role. And you still need to have a certain level of trust, but it should be on the basis of informed trust. So that's the second, um, second mindset. The third mindset relates to preparedness, and we call it embrace the preparedness paradox. We asked all of the CEOs in our study how well their organization is prepared to deal with a serious cyber attack. Then quite a lot of CEOs either said, I don't know, but a lot of the CEOs actually responded with a fairly high level of preparedness. Well, here's the funny twist, because those CEOs that have been through a cyber attack had also previously thought that their organization was well prepared and realized that it wasn't. So there seems to be an inverse relationship between the perception of high preparedness and actual resilience, because high perception of preparedness might lead to complacency and comfort, which can ultimately jeopardize cyber resilience. So the whole idea is to embrace the paradox of preparedness and uh, assume preparedness isn't a state, an end state that you can achieve, but think about it as an ongoing set of activities and processes to always challenge that preparedness. So you never get to the state of complacency. So that's the third mindset, right? Embrace the preparedness paradox. And the fourth mindset very quickly is about stakeholder pressure and communication. And uh, the fourth mindset, we call it adapt your communication styles to regulate stakeholder pressure. Now in the incident, in the event of an attack, a serious attack, there's going to be a lot of pressure on the CEO as the single point from the board, from shareholders, from customers, from regulators who will want to come in. And what we found in the report that sometimes the CEOs have to switch between different communication styles to channel that pressure usefully to build cyber resilience. So that's the fourth mindset, regulate uh, stakeholder pressure with different communication styles. Okay, then, Daniel, just as a final question then, as a key takeaway for, for CEOs and C-suites and board members who are watching the show, what are key things that they need to do or key takeaways from, from your study that they can execute? So there's a couple of very easy things that don't require a lot of work, right? The first thing as a CEO or a board member is to get visibility into the cybersecurity of the company. And building on the idea of not blindly trusting the cybersecurity teams, get an independent advisor to do an independent assessment of the cyber state of cybersecurity in a company and have those findings report to you. That's a very easy thing. So that's a, a, a number one. Number two is spend a couple of days with your cybersecurity team. Learn, engage, and get informed, right? And the third very easy thing to do is reach out to other CEOs and board members who maybe have been through an attack and just ask them to tell the story. Ask them what lessons they've learned. Ask them about their mistakes and their successes. Now, Dr. Mariel, that's uh, really, really good advice. Thank you very much for coming on our show. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Brian. Now, we've been speaking to Dr. Mariel Hapford. He's the Head of Knowledge and Insights at Istari. 
He's also an affiliate researcher at Oxford University. Now, this is BizTech's Asia-Pacific Cybersecurity Show. I'm Brian Fernandez. This interview will be on our website, www.biztech.asia, as well as our social media platforms. It'll also be on our syndication partners, TV stations, radio stations, and websites. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Mm -hmm.